Hi, it's Editor Chan. Today we're going to go over some tips for formatting your dialogue using variables in text formatters. You've probably seen variables in other videos. These are words that appear between tilde symbols which get replaced with other text when displayed in the game. For instance, the name variable will display the name of the current phase's target. Here's a line to talk to a male who just revealed his chest. Another common variable is clothing, which displays the name of the clothing being removed. For example, if Bob just took off his shirt, this line would read, Thanks for taking off your shirt, Bob. Now, clothing can introduce some grammar problems depending on how you phrase your sentence. Let's say that now that I can see some delicious abs, I want to say, I knew that shirt was getting in the way. But what if they were wearing pants over their abs? I knew that pants was getting in the way makes me sound stupid. Almost as stupid as wearing pants for a shirt. To solve this, there is a special syntax to use a different set of words if the clothing is plural. Type clothing dot if plural, left parenthesis, then the text to use if it's plural. Followed by a vertical bar symbol, then the text to use if it's singular. Followed by a close parenthesis and a closing tilde. If you're not a programmer, that's an admittedly unintuitive syntax, but it is what it is. Now, if the clothing was some pants, it will read, I knew those pants were getting in the way. And if the clothing was a shirt, it will read, I knew that shirt was getting in the way. This is why it's important to properly mark your clothing as plural or not in the wardrobe tab. You can also make your own temporary variables containing the name of another opponent by using filters. Let's make a very basic case where I call out the name of another random player as my prediction for who will lose. First, I add a table, filter condition. I set the number from 1 to 5 to indicate that it should cover all number of opponents. Next, I must choose the role for this filter. We want to include everyone but myself as a possibility, so we'll use opponent. Next we want to store the name of a random player that matches this filter's criteria into a variable of our choosing. I'll use other for other player. Finally, I'll use the variable in my dialog. Notice that the variable suggester recognizes our variable. Note that this filter is too broad since it will include players that are already out of the game. How do you think you would fix that? I won't cover it, but you would use the filter's status field to check that they're still in the game. Let's take a look at a recipe to see another usage of a custom filter. This recipe puts the name of the player in first place into a variable called leader. This filter looks very similar to ours, but there is an additional place check using the custom leader variable to ensure that the opponent stored in leader is actually in first place. Let's do one more example of a custom variable that is slightly more complex. We want to make a player feel better after stripping by reminding them that unlike someone else, they at least aren't naked. So first, let's check the target status to verify that they aren't naked, and then add a filter which checks that at least one other player is naked. I'll store this in a variable called naked. For role, we don't want to include me or the loser, so we use the role also playing. And then I can refer to that in my dialog. Now, I should have put this in the opponent stripped case, rather than opponent lost, because they might be getting naked right now, but let's roll with it. That about covers it for variables. Let's go into how you can make your text fancier using text formatters. These use a syntax of open curly brace, formatter name, close curly brace. For example, the small formatter will make my font smaller to add insult to injury to the male who lost. The big formatter will make the font size larger. You can change text format mid-sentence as well and then clear all formatters by using the special reset formatter. Here is a list of all built-in formatters available at the time of this video. You can see this list when typing a curly brace in the editor.
This also works for variables. For multi-tier variables like clothing, typing dot will give you the available sub-functions for the variable too. There is limited support for HTML tags as well. These tags are supported in dialog. In addition to the standard formatters, you can create your own character-specific formatters in the Advanced tab. Click the plus to create a new formatter style. Give it the name you will use to access it in dialog. And optionally a description about what it does. Then, click the Add button to add a style to the formatter. There are a few standard style types for you to use, or you can use the other style for using arbitrary CSS. Here I picked color in order to change my text color. I'll make it pink. The preview box gives you an idea how it will look in the game, since as you've probably noticed, the editor's text preview on the side does not show formatters. For fun, I'll add a shadow effect as well. As I play with the values, you can see it update immediately in the preview. Keep in mind that you should not format your text just because it's fun. There should be a very good reason to justify using special text because it really stands out. One example is if you have two characters sharing a space, you could use different colors to differentiate who is speaking. Now, to actually use your formatter, it works the same way as the standard ones. You can see that the suggester recognizes the formatter and includes the description supplied. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything. Have fun creating, and see you in another video.